So in the last video, I gave this visual diagram um, to help build an intuition behind why the projection uh, is actually a linear transformation. In this video, I want to go through a direct proof um, showing that the projection is a linear transformation. And so let me get some space here. And so and I'm going to actually move this out of the way. Let's say, let's start with the first one, right? So I'm actually still on my orange pen here. The first one that we need to prove is that the transformation of V plus W, the better W, okay, this is equal to the transformation of V plus the transformation of W. Now, so first and foremost, uh, we we notice we note that the transformation is a function, right? It takes in two vectors or a, it takes in a vector, uh, either V plus W, the sum of those two, or V or W, and it, it projects it onto a plane. We know that the transformation function, uh, T, this is equivalent to projecting some vector V, which is convenient in our case, onto the plane spanned by some vector X. And um, you know, if you're unfamiliar with that, well, you'll you'll understand what I mean by the plane span by x um, here in a second. And so this function is our transformation. Now, um, how do we get that projection vector, right? Because if we go back up, we're we're actually taking v here and creating the transformation of v, which is a transformation vector, a projection onto that plane. Um, that we see right there. So how do we get that projection vector? The, the formula for it is we're going to, so if I take the projection of V onto X, and this is how you can read it, I'm projecting, um, let me write that a little better. I'm projecting V onto X. Uh, that's going to be equal to uh, this formula right here. It's going to be equal to X times V times x divided by the the length of x squared. I'm just going to stick with uh, single lines right here, um, just to make it simpler. But this is the transformation function. You give me a vector v, or any vector, w doesn't matter, just a letter, and then it, this will create a projection vector onto the plane spanned by x. And so what do I mean by, mean by the plane spanned by x? Um, x, let's imagine that x is actually this vector, right? This is x. Um, v will get projected onto x, but you're probably wondering, you're saying, hey, it doesn't point in this direction as well, it only points in the other direction. Well, when if so when we project w onto x, what the projection does is it projects uh, w onto a plane that's spanned by x. And so a plane spanned by x, we haven't uh, haven't covered span yet, but you can imagine uh, taking x and scaling it up infinitely many times in this direction, and then flipping it around and then scaling it infinitely many times in this direction. And what you get is this plane that spans off into infinity um, that, that is the, the span of vector x, and it's the plane spanned by it, and you're projecting these two vectors um, onto this plane just like that. And so now that we've defined our transformation function, we, we, knew, we, now, we are now set to prove that um, this side is equal to this side. So here we go. So first, what is this? Uh, let's do this left side. So this left side is going to be, it's going to be um, x, let me draw a little bit smaller so we have some room. It's going to be x times uh, x v plus w, right? Because v in this case is v plus w, and it's going to be divided by the length of x squared. Okay, now this next side, it is going to be, conveniently, the transformation of v is just going to be this formula over here, so we're just like, you know, looking over there. Um, v times x over the length of x squared, and plus x times w this time times x times the length of x squared. 
So what we do right now, how we're going to rearrange this is I'm going to uh, put everything in the numerator because these denominators are the same, so that's very nice. In the numerator, we're going to have x, v times x, plus x, w times x, right, all over x squared. And then we can factor out an x here, right? And what we're left with is inside, uh, we're left with um, v times x plus uh, w times x, right? All over the length of x squared. And now, if you notice, we can actually rewrite this one the same way. Uh, since x is technically in the numerator here, uh, we can rewrite this one. These are just the same, I just added brackets. And so um, this is essentially the same. Uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna keep this x out in a bracket and I'm gonna distribute this x through. Um, so this, this numerator up here is gonna turn into, um, I'm gonna write it in this order, v times x plus w times x, right? Let me write that a little bit better. Okay, and then leaving the, the length of x squared in the denominator, these two are exactly the same. And so plug in v plus w into the projection function over here is equal to um, plugging v and w and then summing out the projection function on the right hand side. Now the second one to prove is that, and this is something that mathematicians would call uh, trivial, is um, we're gonna prove that the transformation of C times V is equal to C times the transformation of V. And so this is um, the transformation of C times V. Remember, we're, uh, our transformation is a projection, and so we just uh, merely just plug in uh, C times V times X all over the length of X squared. And this is going to be equal to, I'm going to pull C out um, here, uh, the C times X times uh, V times X, right, divided by the length of X squared. And now, what's the cool thing about this is that we can just pull the C out because it's a constant. And so this is equal to CX V times X length of X squared. And since, you know, uh, we can, since C is, I'm sorry, wrong way. If since C is a constant, we can sort of distribute it through here. And so we're gonna multiply it by C times X in here, which removes that outer parentheses. And we're left with C times X, V times X, V times X, all over the length of X squared. And that proves the, uh, the second part. And so, um, yeah, if the visual is good enough for you, Awesome, uh, but I always like to go through the um, the the more um, well-defined proof. I don't always do it, but I feel like in this case, um, it, it warranted a more well-defined proof.